Hello there, it's a very late 12.30 midnight, boys and girls, on Wednesday the 31st of May 2017. I remember to think while I speak each word there for a moment. Welcome along to a late night United Kingdom tour. Welcome along, boys and girls. It's been a busy old time. Let's just say hello to the early people with us today. Uh, Gustav, oh, Gustav says, Morning, lovey. How did it go at Slimmer's World? I'll tell you about it soon. Don't worry, it's all coming. Did you confess your sins? The chips at Central Station, the Cajun chips and milkshakes from five guys called Mo, the cheese and onion crisps the custard creams. No, you don't need to do any of that, Gustav. You don't need to do any of that, darling. Absolutely, I'll come. Don't rush me. Don't rush me, Shady JD. Chris, this intro is long. Do you like my intro, Shady D JD? The reason for the five-minute intro is that it gets people ready just because you don't want to miss anything. If I just clicked go and started talking, you could miss the first two or three minutes. It might be for something very important. It, I might... I might have given away a holiday for two to Australia, business class or something like that. And then I'll have the, the last laugh by booking you with British Airways. <laughs> Will it ever take off, dear? God's sake. Morning, Shady. Uh, Paul's there. Hello, Paul. Lou's there. Hello, Lou. John True. Greetings, John. Uh, Kevin Webster's with us. Uh, Joanna as well. And the lovely Wendy. Greetings and prosperity to all of our early people joining us from all over the world on this lovely Wednesday night. Well, let's go back a little bit further first. Monday night at the karaoke. We just had a bank holiday here in the UK. Uh, that is, we have several of those in the year. When the Monday, uh, there's there's a Friday as well. There's a Good Friday, that's a bank holiday. Uh, there's a Boxing Day, which can be kind of any day during the week. And there's several Mondays during the year where we have the, where, where well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not so, it's not so... Pre prevalent now, I suppose. A lot of people have to work on bank holiday Sundays. It used to be that virtually everything was closed on a bank holiday. Not anymore. Just a normal day for an awful lot of people. But we've just had one. And uh, the karaoke on Monday night was exceptionally busy. I think we had uh, 25 people at um, Central Station on, on, did I say Saturday, on Monday night. It was really, really good. And lovely people as well. New people as well. If you were watching the live stream from Central Station, you would have seen two fans fantastic singers sam and jace jason julian jason i'm sorry it was jason sam and jason who sung um for us wonderful singer oh there's a let me fly in here oh there's a fly in here um and they sung a couple of musicals numbers they were fantastic singers friends of adam the plumbers so that's what they were of course, yesterday was Tuesday, and yesterday was the big day, boys and girls. I have joined Slimmer's World. I've joined Slimmer's World. How's that? Hello to Daniel. Little Daniel used to be a barman at Central Station as well. Greetings to you. Justin's there. Justin, I tried to ring you uh, the other day. I cannot make Thursday, I'm afraid. Especially not as I'm started on Slimmer's World. Oh, yes. Well, I nearly didn't make it. I got on my bike, and I thought there's a few clouds in the sky, but, you know... Whatever, I checked the weather forecast. No rain forecast today. So I'm on my little bike. I've got halfway there and it started. Oh, no. Don't say I'm going to get too wet by the time. It was too late now to turn around and come back, put the bike away, get the car out and go. And it was too late. If I'd done that, I wouldn't have made it. And I did, I have to be honest, I did think to myself, shall I leave it for a week? Shall I leave it and go there next Tuesday? And I thought, no, because if that happens, you've kind of backtracked, haven't you? You can't do that. So I continued with my long, arduous journey to Wokingham, which is about 25 minutes on a push bike, to be honest. All right, it's not too bad. Uh, as it happens, the rain didn't get too bad. It was kind of just sprinkling a little bit. So by the time I got there, that was all right. I changed my bike up um, and it was... It's, it's actually held in a Salvation Army church hall, which is in Wokingham. Actually, quite near my church. I cycle past my church 
uh, by for about another minute, and then you get to the Salvation Army Church at the other end. Uh, so signs everywhere, great big signs and what have you. Um, slim as well this way, and I saw people going in and all that. So I I, I walked in. Um, not really nervous. Um, I, I, I don't really get that nervous going into new places. You could see that it could be a nerve wracking experience, though, you know, but I, I wasn't really nervous. And I walked through the door and I'm looking around and immediately this woman come up to me in a pink cardigan and she says, hello, you're new, aren't you? I said, yes, that's right. I says, um, I haven't been before. She says, OK. She says, uh, I'm Linda. I'm uh, looking after you today. I'm taking the session. She says, um, uh, if you just fill out one of those forms and I have a little sit down and I'll come over and see you. Oh, OK. So I sat down. While I sat down, some other woman come over. She said, do you want a cup of tea? I said, oh, I'd love a cup of tea, please. So she went out and she said, I'll show you where it all is and you can help yourself in future. So I went outside. She showed me where all the tea was, all included in the, I think it's £4.95 a week you pay for this or something like that and uh, I got my tea and I started filling out the form just usual questions name address phone number and uh, you know while I was filling in that form I felt the weight falling off I absolutely did found the weight falling off <laughs> I think by the time I'd filled out the form I'd already lost a stone good evening Duke I hope you're well today thank you Duke <laughs> <laughs> carried on filling the format and people were arriving now all sorts of people um mainly middle-aged ladies i suppose um i've got to say there wasn't anyone there who was extortionately obese i i, I can't honestly say there was any enormous you know like when you go don't like to upset them you know like if you go to new york or somewhere like that I, my God, dear. Jesus Christ. There is fat hanging off. Actually, I know, you know, I know a few large people. I do. I do. And I do joke sometimes. I know I say fat this and fat that. Actually, it's nothing to be laughed at, really. I couldn't care less what people look like. Honestly, I couldn't. But it's your health. I worry about people's health sometimes, you know. Um... But there wasn't anyone who was enormously fat. There was a few people who was a little bit chubby. Maybe you could describe me as a little bit chubby. But that, that's about all, you know. Um, so the meeting started and uh, Linda was her name. Uh, which I've got a little cart. I've got, you get this booklet. You get this little pouch of booklets and it's got all sorts of things in it. And uh, Linda was the lady. The lady with the pink cardigan. And behind her, she had this like bag that I don't know if they, the Slimmest World people had made it for her or she'd had it made herself. But it says Slimmest World, the time's on it there because she does four sessions there. She does 9.30, 11.30, which is the one I've elected to go to, 5.30 and 7.30. And she's got this little bag behind her. And on it is a little cartoon character of a lady in glasses. And I said, my God, that's you, isn't it? She, and she laughed. Yeah, she said, do you like it? I said, yes, I do. I wanted to buy one of those immediately, dear. I was hooked in straight away just by the pretty carrier bag. Beautiful it was, designed and all that. Anyway, so she started talking and it turns out that this is the first class that she's taken. Now, she's been a member of Slimming World for some time now, but this was the first actual class she sat and she was telling us that she was nervous and all that. But you know what? She was bloody excellent. She was really, really good. And um, we enjoyed listening to her and she was very informative, told us all about, and it's all about the support. She was very, um, wanted to get across to us that she would never, ever uh, demean us or make us feel bad about perhaps not losing any weight or maybe gaining a bit of weight. She said, that will never, ever happen while we're here. And she said, I would like to think that none of you in there would do the same to any other people in this wall. In this wall, if you want to talk about fat, anything like that, it's fine. She said, just leave it in this wall and don't take it outside because other people won't be as understanding because we're all in there for the same reason. As I say, it was mainly middle-aged ladies. There was an, uh, an elderly gentleman in front of me who was ever so tall. Uh, he was about 72, I would say. And uh, now and again, because we, we were really... Uh, and there was a young boy in there, I suppose 13-ish. He was with his mum and he was chubby. He was chubby. So, you know, 
everyone's in there together. There were some there were some thin people in there that I couldn't work out why they were there. And then as the session went on and she was uh, Linda was talking a lot. Um, it turns out that these are people that have been coming for a while and want to stay like that. You see, because what can I, it's not a diet. I'll tell you that now. It's not a diet. All right. There's none of this, you know, oh, you can just have lettuce there and, and perhaps a bit of lettuce there and, or maybe a piece of lettuce there. It's, it's not like that at all. It really, I was very, very surprised um, how the whole thing went. Um, and it turns out these thin people that are there have, you know, they've been through the whole thing and are now thin and want to stay like that. Because, of course, the danger is you lose the weight. You stop going and then you start putting it back on again. The whole idea of having lots of people together gives you that sort of thing to do. Now, I have managed to lose weight myself before. I got to 13 and a half stone once, um, 13 and a half, 12 and a half, and I got back down to 11 on my own. On my own. But for, for some reason, this was 10 years ago. But for some reason, this time, I can't do it on my own. I don't know why. Don't know why. But that's it. And that's the whole idea of going to this thing. Um, so the meeting went on. Uh, she told us about all these different foods you can have. And uh, one of the books that you get is this here. Food Optimising, which is um, very, very interesting. Okay. Uh, oh, some of your messages coming through. Do you want me to do those? Joanna says it's a new way of living and eating. Yes, indeed. Oh, have you done it, Joanna? Have you done it? I think it's worldwide, isn't it? Slimmer's World. Rod says, I've just woke up, chucked a few chocolates in my mouth and you're talking Slimming World. Is there no hope for me? No, none at all. Just carry on enjoying your food, Rod. It's not, believe me, you know, it's not a problem unless you want it to be a problem. For me, it's a problem. If you're happy with how you are, then... Just go with it. Hello, Yoga. Yago's with us. Hello, Yago. Yeah, I'll leave the two brewers tomorrow, Yago. It's my last day tomorrow. Uh, Mary Wright's with us as well. Ah, Joanna says I was extremely large. 310 pounds, not anymore. Well done. Fantastic. Hello to Duke today. Oh, Justin's left. Is that a private message there? Thank you, yes. Private message there. So this food optimising, for a start, let me give you some examples. There are free foods. Now, the whole, th whole thing seems to be based on SYNS. That's S-Y-N-S. And different foods or different prepackaged meals have a number of SYNS. For a man, I'm allowed, I think it's 25 SYNS a day. 25 sins a day. So you look your food up either in this book or in a Slimmer's World app. And you type in whatever it is, banana, and it will say for banana, no sins. So you can basically eat, not, oh, you'll be all right with three bananas. No, you can eat in a day as many bananas as you want. Bearing in mind, of course, you can only eat so many. That is a sin-free food. A lot of it's common sense, to be fair. We've always been told that generally fruit and vegetables are OK for you. Now, I learned uh, that, you know, when you get these Nutra bullets and all that, and that's all well and good, right? So you chuck in three bananas, a couple of oranges, a few apples, and, and then you drink it. You think that's good, don't you? But look at the amount you've had. Would you ever have had, you know, three apples on the go, Four banana, you you just wouldn't do it, would you? That's the da I think that's the danger with these things, these blender things. So a lot of the foods are sin free. Basically, they tell you you can eat as much as you want. You've got whole lists of vegetables there to be expected, I suppose. You know, again, um, whole lists of fruit there. And also, you see these little letters next to the fruit and that. Now, they mean something as well. So if the item, if the food item has got an S next to it, that means it's a speed food. It says it's very low in energy density, so calories. So you, they can have extra slimming power. For the best results, enjoy at least one third of a plate of speed foods, uh, such as the vegetables and all that. And, and speed food examples... Uh, Apples, apricots, blackberries, blackcurrants, 
uh, clementines, cranberries, uh, and the list goes on. Exactly the same with the vegetables. Let's choose some of the popular ones. Brussels, I mean, virtually all, if you can, this, the S, it might be a bit too small for you to see. S is the, it's the round thing, the little round ones, okay? They are S's. And as you can see on the vegetables, virtually everything is a speed food. You just put as much on there um, as you want. Okay? Uh, the it's also got p protein rich foods packed with filling power helping you stay fuller for longer and it says what's more our protein rich free foods are naturally slimming too so it can be a speed food and a protein food there's only four of these f these foods are for high in fiber so they help to go through and it's also good for filling up and c these foods are good for calcium essential for bones and teeth um uh, uh, and that's it. So that's the fruit and the vegetables there, okay? And then there's fish. A lot of fish is sin-free. Now, when I say that, presumably you're not cooking them in butter and wine and oils. It's uh, uh, After a while, I kind of understood that most of the all these free foods, it's the oil and the butter that are doing the damage, it seems. Meat and poultry, if you're a meat eater, I'm sure most of you are. Um, even very lean bacon, beef, gammon, goat, ham, lamb, mince, pork and veal, all sin-free. But remember, that is on its own. You're likely to get your packet of mince and put a load of oils and sauces with it, aren't you? Huh? Of course, if you're vegetarian like me, you don't really need specific vegetarian recipes or things like that. You simply replace any recipe, if it's minced beef, minced corn. If it's diced chicken, diced corn or tofu, something like that. So it's not hard. You, you, you never need. When people say, oh, have you got any vegetarian recipes? You don't need them. You simply take a normal recipe and substitute the meat for one of the other type of things. In my case, I usually use corn, something like that. All right. Dairy products, right? Fat-free natural fromage fray, fat-free natural yogurt, low-fat, virtually fat-free cottage cheese. There's loads. Eggs, sin-free. All this stuff is sin-free. Rice, sin-free. Of course, that isn't the rice that you get from Uncle Ben's that has been done in oil. This would be dried rice that you've done in water yourself. Beans, baked beans. One of my favourite meals in tomato sauce, are sin-free. I mentioned this the other day to you, didn't I? About the breakfasts. I can have um, bran flakes. Okay, now I'll look in the back here. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. Where's the bran flakes now? Cereal. Here we are, cereals. Right, so for, for years I've been having bran flakes or porridge. Bran flakes, it says 25 grams. So... Probably I have about 40 grams. Now, the bran flakes are, for 25 grams, four sins. So, shall we say seven? So, in the morning, I was having seven, just bran flakes. Um, I don't know if that's with the milk or not. I, I guess it wouldn't be. Then you'd add the milk to that. So, say ten sins for bran flakes. And yet, I could have a plate full of baked beans, mushrooms, um... Tomatoes. What's the other thing I have on there? Now, I do all those under the grill. No oil. And what's the other thing? Eggs. Scrambled eggs. No oil. Or you can have fried eggs and use that low-fat spray, which I've, I've never used that before, so I might get some of that. That is sin-free. And let me ask you, what would you rather have? That. Or that bowl of chopped up cardboard, or otherwise known as bran flakes. <laughs> Dreadful. Um, where are we now? Tea, sin free, is the milk. You get so much allowance of milk per day. Fortunately, I drink soya milk. 
and you get more soya milk than you would normal milk. So that's that's different. And there's just so much to, to look through this book. I've got to sit down and read the whole thing. Interestingly enough, while I was sitting there, I thought I'd look up some of the things that I have literally been chucking down my throat ever since Easter. You ready for this? Now, remember, I said... Where as men, we're allowed, I think, 25 sins a day. You never count calories. You don't look at the back. Oh, it's two, 215 calories. You don't do it. You count sins. 25 a day. Now, look at this. One packet of Walker's crisps, all varieties. If I have the large packet, it's eight and a half sins. Remember, you're allowed 25 a day. Now, generally, when I go in the BP garage on the way home, I'll go in for one and then I'll see, instead of being like 90 pence for one, it'll be £1.20 for two. So you buy two. I'll leave one in the car. Then you eat the first one. No. Not going to happen, is it? Then you eat the second one. So on the way home, I will have 17 sins. You're only allowed 25 a day. So there's there's one of my problems. And you know as well, I love milkshakes. Okay? So I then looked up milkshakes. And the small, is it there? Hang on. Dairy products. Yes, dairy products. Oh, no, that's that. Where's, where's the drinks now? Drinks cold. Is that it? Drinks cold. Nope. Drinks cold. I can't find it. I don't think I can find it now. But I do remember what it was. And I think the small... Hang on, it might be meals out, mightn't it? So, yeah, look, another thing I like. Cheese and onion pasties. I love the cheese and onion pasty. Do you? One cheese and onion pasty. 21 sins. So that's 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 all your allowance in one day. In one meal. <laughs> what about galaxy chocolate let's look that up for you galaxy yeah, galaxy milk chocolate 42 gram bar is that the small one well that's 11 and a half that's not too bad is it but that's you see what i mean that's that's a third of your sins gone already corn has virtually nothing which is the stuff i have i'm just trying to find these milkshakes for you um Fish and chip shops, Indian takeaways. P yeah, pizza. Pizza. What about this one? Pizza. I love a pizza. Uh, and funny, I'm going out for pizza on Thursday. My um, uh, The manager I work at, where I'm leaving on Thursday this week, he's taking me out for a... For, he said, what do you want? I said, well, I'll just go for a pizza. Classic crust pizza. How much? Seven sins. Hang on a minute. Per slice. That's not the whole pizza. Seven sins per slice. So there must be 30, 40, 50 sins in a pizza. Jeez, I can't, I'm afraid I can't find the milkshake. But if I remember rightly, it was something like 12 and a half. That's one milkshake. So that's it. So I'm on. So we, we went through the meeting. Um, it was excellent. At the end of the meeting, I went up and paid my money. We get one of these as well. This is a food diary, okay? So for the first week, I don't know if we do this every week, we keep a food diary. We write what we've had for breakfast, lunch and dinner. We then hand that in to, uh, to the lady and she says, if there's anything that screams out at her, she'll quietly come and tell us. But, you know, we won't be told off or anything, but look, like, here's what, what where you're going wrong sort of thing. And um, I shall be filling out this week. And um, don't know when I had my hair cut. Popped over to Marks and Spencer's, got some bananas because they are sin free. And strawberries. Strawberries are sin free. Of course, you don't cover them in, cho in, in chocolate or sugar or milk or double, triple, quadruple ripped cream. That's where you're going wrong. Strawberries on their own. Now, what's wrong with those? I came back and I thought, right, let's start. You know, no point in saying, oh, well, I'll start tomorrow morning. It's a bit like when you give up smoking, isn't it? Oh, I just have another two cigarettes before I give up. It doesn't work. You've got to start now. So I got back and thought, right, let's go for it. Went in to look in my fridge. I had two corn steaks and I had um, vegetables. Now, you know I have packets of vegetables. 
But I have the packets of vegetables that you put the two holes in the top and it's also got three knobs of butter in there, which slowly ooze over the vegetables. Big mistake. It's the butter. So now I go and but I could do steamed vegetables. They're quite nice. But now I buy the little packet of vegetables that you just put holes in. So it's just vegetables in there. There's no butter or anything like that. So that's good. No sins there at all. And then did I have pudding? What did I have for pudding? I had, I had a, a Muller light strawberry yogurt, which I think is something like two sins or something like that. So I've started. I started. And then tonight I had spaghetti arabata. Now, spaghetti, you probably think you can't be allowed loads of that. Incorrect. Spaghetti on its own, dried spaghetti that you do in water, not with oil and water, just water. And I'm, funnily enough, I've always done it in just water. Sin free. You can fill up on wholemeal spaghetti completely sin free. The sauce itself was probably about 10 sins. But going over what I've had the rest of the day, that's OK, you see. You don't. Uh, am I hungry now? Absolutely not. And I had dinner. What time do I have dinner tonight? Around about eight o'clock. Up past seven, eight o'clock I had dinner. And a load of spaghetti and the sauce. And that's all. That's it. Not hungry. So we're away. And I shall let you know how I do. Now, you're wondering how much I weigh. Well, at the back, you get the little membership card and all that. I think I paid £9.95. To, oh, and they sell these things as well. Little chocolate bars. OK. Now, these are absolutely, these are my favourite ones. I'd already tried a couple of these on the show, uh, you might have known. I bought two boxes of these. There's this one, Rocky Road, which is like a chocolate bar with little marshmallow things on it. And you can have one of those, and I think that's three sins, that is. OK, three, uh, is it, are there, is it there? Three, two, please recycle. Oh, hang on a minute. Is it, oh, I can't read the blooming my, my eyes, dear. My eyes are see the coming and the glory of the Lord. No, hang on a minute. Where is it now? Um, I can't see it now. Oh, it doesn't say it on there. Usually, I'm sure it said something like three. I think these are three sins each. These things. There, ah, there we go. Three sins per bar. OK, so you can have one of those. It's not really going to bother you. You think to yourself, I know what you're saying to yourself, oh, well, why have the chocolate then? It's three sins. Let me tell you, I used to buy a chocolate, a packet of chocolate biscuits on the way home, along with the crisps. And I'd eat the crisps in the car on the way back. I'd get here, I'd have a cup of tea, or I'd just have two chocolate biscuits. Hello? No. The whole packet would go, almost all the packet. Especially those um, Marks and Spencer's chocolate rounds. Have you ever had any of those? <gasps> oh, my God, they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. I highly recommend them. Marks and Spencer's very, very chocolatey. But I'd have half the packet. Here, I'm having one. You're actually allowed to have an extra one. You could have two of these. Actually, one's enough. These are delicious. I've got those and the chocolate orange ones. That's what I bought. Very, very nice. And I'll probably have one when I've finished chatting to you today. I'll probably have a cup of tea and have one of those uh, just before I go to bed. But you shouldn't have to be hungry at all. They advise you to make a shopping list tomorrow, which I've already started on. Go out tomorrow and fill your cupboard with all the free foods, the free sin foods. Bananas, tomatoes, all of that. Again, and there's little things you can change that you probably wouldn't notice. For example, on those um, corn steaks I had today, I put a bit of tomato sauce on. But instead of getting the tomato, so you imagine my plate, two of those corn steaks on. All right. Imagine they're just two normal steaks. OK, uh, the big load of vegetables on the side, which I've had for ages. I would then honestly get the tomato sauce and cover the whole plate with tomato sauce. A bottle of tomato sauce, large, generally lasts me a week. Not anymore. I carefully placed my little corn steaks on there and it ch 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 just on the steaks, just three little strips. That's it. But I could replace that tomato sauce, which I think if is, is quite high in sins. OK, I can replace that with slices of tomato, surely. And they're sin free. And it's all about cutting back on all the oils and the sugars. That That's how it seems to me. All right. 
That's it. She weighed me. I paid me money. £9.95, I think, was the first one. And then you see it's £4.75 a week. Now, you set a target weight. I have set my target weight at 12. Uh, she said, have you got a target weight? So I said, well, weigh me first. And I was, uh, as I thought, well, I, well, she put 13 and a half. I, all I saw when I was there, I'll be honest with you, all I saw was 13 and a half stone. And I thought, yeah, I thought I was about 13 and a half stone. OK, so tonight Ron has been over and I was telling him all about it. I actually came over this afternoon and I was telling him all about my, my little meeting at Slim, my first meeting at Slim as well. Um, and uh, when I opened the book, I was a little bit disappointed to read. She actually wrote, because I, I only saw 13 and a half. What she's written down is 13 stone, 13 and a half pounds. So actually, I'm 14. I know you look at me, you wouldn't think I was 14 stone, but I am. I'm nearly 14 stone. I'm actually 13 stone, 13 and a half pounds. So then they ask you, what have you got a goal that you want to reach? And I said, yeah, I think about 12 stone because I've got a couple of pictures of myself uh, when I was 12 stone. I was sort of reasonably happy with how uh, my weight at that point. She said, oh, shall I put down 12? I said, well, maybe it should be 11 and a half. And she said, no, make it 12. If you want to reduce it after that, then fine. Make it 12. that would be easier for you. OK, we'll make it 12. So she wrote down the 12, 12 there. Now, if I reach my target weight of 12, from then on, being in Slimming World is free. You don't have to pay your £4.75 or whatever it is, £4.95 a week. So there you see you've got another um, thing to... What's the word? Another... Um, achieve, another... Um, oh, gosh. I've, I've, I've stuck for a word again, aren't I? You know, another goal there, another goal that 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 if you get it, you will get something back. So that is, the whole thing seems to be set up like they have little prizes every week for like slimmer of the week. And the idea is if everyone brings something like a, a can of baked beans or, you know, can of tuna chunks, if you like. I'm not a fish, but I can't bear the smell of fish, uh, something like that. And you all put it in this basket and then you have a raffle. And whoever wins, wins that basket of stuff. Obviously, you wouldn't be putting their Galaxy chocolate bars or Mars bars or something like that. So that's that. They have a Slimmer of the Month, I think, and a, and a Man of the Year or something like that, which is good, which was won by the bloke in front of me. Now, what was his name? I think it was, was it Dave? Can't remember his name now. Don't remember. This is the bloke who was in front of me. He's 72. He was 19 stone and is now 14. And he's done that in a year. If you stick to this, and she stood there, she said, if you don't lose weight by sticking to exactly what we do here, we will give you your money back. And she said, but it hasn't happened yet. That's what she actually said. In the first week, I should lose between three and ten pounds. I don't think I'm going to lose ten pounds. I, 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 I'm not massively. And in actual fact, they said the fatter you are, the easier that first bit is to lose a load, you know? So if you're massively obese, I'm sure maybe one or two of you are. If you are massively obese, you can actually lose a lot in that first time. If you're not so fat, then you'll probably won't, won't lose as much. But it's absolutely, I'm going to do this. And I've started already, and I shall let you know how I do. So I'm now 13 stone. 13 and a half pounds so almost just just a touch under that 14 stone and um we'll see how we goes i wonder actually if any of you um have done slimming world and you want to come in and uh, uh, and you want to call in on the show and talk to us about it on the show tonight then uh, you're welcome to call in there's a phone line open right now 020 8144 three four double seven okay oh two oh eight one double four three four double seven i've got skype as well if you want to skype in my skype username is all one word united kingdom talk so once again the skype username united kingdom talk or you can phone in oh two oh eight one double four three four double seven if you don't want to phone in that's all right as well well um we'll leave it at that okay uh some of your messages coming in mary warn morning mary has sent in a little picture of her with a halo on. Why, have you been a good girl? Oh, I doubt that very much, Mary. When have you ever been a good girl? 
Tommy says tuna chunks. Oh, no, I don't like tuna chunks. I do not like tuna chunks, I'm afraid. Um, thank you, Mary. Uh, incentive. It was incentive. You see, by by not having a fee after you've gained, after you've got down to your correct weight, that's an incentive, isn't it? An incentive. Thank you, Mary. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Danielle, hope your little baby's all right, darling. Good. That's it. There we are. So that's that's that little story for you there, boys and girls. Okay. We'll let you know how it goes. Anyone else? 0208 Now, I've um, been collecting sort of loads of stories here. There's a chap that um, prints out, or is often printing out news stories. Um, and I haven't been reading them. And I've suddenly realised I've got a blooming pile of them in here. And it's so kind of him to print these bits and pieces off. But I'd like to read you a couple of these out today. Joey says, hello. Hello, Joey. Kevin says, uh, are the books free or you pay for them? All those books are free. That's like a, a pet pack. It's a book there. OK, that that all, all this stuff here is included in your membership fee of like four pounds ninety five a week, which is nothing. I mean, you'll save that on all the blooming food you get. Of course, Remember, I, mean, I don't drink, do I, or smoke or anything like that, so I haven't got to worry about that. There's also a section... <clears throat> I should have told you this. Uh, there's also a section about um, your activity, which, uh, quite frankly, I don't think I'm going to even need to look at that because I am very active. Uh, I do all the swimming and the cycling and the walking around, jumping around on the stage like a lunatic. I don't know what's happened to me. The last two karaoke's I've done, I have been quite mad on the stage. I don't know why. Some. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Well, that used to that seemed to used to sort me out in my thirties, didn't it? <laughs> I also bought this. Uh, it's it's a it's a book, and it's got like you know lots of recipes in there. I can see um, what I'm have, going to have to do is spend more time on food, as in cooking or something like that. You know, I, I don't think I can afford to not, I, I, well, I, I, you know, I don't want to do this and not do it properly. I'm going to have to start cooking my own stuff. Uh, I think one of my problems also is I keep opening a box, if you see what I mean. You know, like beef stew and jump-ins, open the box, put it in the microwave. I do a lot of that microwave. Lasagna in the microwave. Cottage, corn cottage pie in the microwave. I should be making these things from scratch. The spaghetti arabetta sauce. Poke two two holes in the top of the little plastic jar, stick it in the microwave. Now, there's a hell of a lot of oil in that. If I had made that myself, I probably wouldn't have half the oil in it. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can make some of these sauces with no oil and just water. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to experiment, but I'm definitely going to have to spend more time actually cooking from scratch, I think. So that time's going to have to come out of something else. But I think it's important to do that, you know. Um, thank you, Kevin. I hope I do well as well. All right. Now, look at this. Little article on the BBC website, kindly sent in by Johnny Key a while ago. Boomerangs. Boomerangs. Now, I've got a boomerang here, actually. Look at this. I got this from Australia. Um, when did I get this? Now, this is an 18, a nice big 18 inch of this one. Look at this. $10 this cost me when I was in Australia. I think I actually bought this as a gift to someone. I can't remember now. Um, in, oh, where is it? You, you get a boat at Sydney and you go across the, the es sort of where the ocean comes in there. Manly. I think I bought this in a shop in Manly for $10. Anyway, it's a boomerang. Does it work? I don't know. Cut people's heads off with these, don't you? And the story goes, uh, you've done your shopping, but there's just one thing missing. This thing you absolutely don't need, but somehow still want to set yourself apart. Look no further. French luxury band Chanel has your back a boomerang for $1,460. That's about £1,130. A hefty price tag. Surely it must be designed by a famous indigenous artist. Sadly, no. 
The Indigenous community in Australia says this is yet another example of crass cultural appropriation. Isn't it? Or, I mean, it just... Why would you buy that? I mean, look at the difference. Look at that picture and this... The, so that... Well, I, that's 1,130 pounds, right? That... Ten dollars. Now, tell me what one looks better. Huh? <laughs> it's just these blooming people with more money than cents, isn't it, that buy this stuff? The item is listed on Chanel's website under other accessories in the 2017 spring-summer pre-collection, along with other gadgets, like a pair of beach rackets with balls for 2,860 quid. Jesus. Uh, spending a little extra to give you that air of luxury should, of course, not come as a surprise when it comes to brands in the lead of Chanel. It's the name you pay for, you see, and it is. But accusations of offending or even humiliating, humiliating, humiliating an entire indigenous culture are a different ballgame, and a French luxury band certainly is feeling some heat. It goes on to say... It's simply a misappropriation of Aboriginal culture. Uh, Gabrielle Sullivan, chief executive of the Indigenous Arts Code, tells the BBC. And it's just awful, isn't it? I mean, boomerangs have traditionally been used by Australia's Indigenous people as a hunting weapon. But they make, they've make they been making these things, you know, like the one I bought for years, like for tourists. Why is it these big companies always come in? It's, it's all about money. You know, they say, oh, we can make a bit of money. Let's make one of those. And I just think, you know, it is a, a little bit sad that someone would want to buy the Chanel one when they can have, which is probably made, I don't know, handmade by, or, or, is it a factory job? I don't know. I mean, yeah, OK, it's much smoother and all that. But honestly, it's nothing like the real thing, is it? So my advice to you there is buy a proper boomerang, boys and girls. Tie me kangaroo down, boy. Tie well, perhaps I shouldn't be singing that song. I don't know. Uh, good morning to Danny, Cle Danny Clements this morning. Morning, Danny. Mary Wright says, in Iceland, they actually do Slimming World frozen foods with how many sins on the packaging. Yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. Unfortunately, we don't have, a, we don't have an Iceland here in Bracknell or Wokingham or Camberley. Um, I don't know where there is an Iceland round here. I should look it up on there. But uh, really, I, I think really I am better to, to try and start cooking the stuff myself. But definitely down to the supermarket tomorrow. Yes, to fill up my little basket with sin-free food. That's what we got to do. Tommy wants a Versace one. Do you? <laughs> Gustav says cultural appropriation is nonsense. I bet the Aborigines were complaining that doing it wearing Western European clothing, but no one dares say the same back to them. Well, of course, you're used to wearing all that strange stuff, aren't we, uh, Gustav? I don't know where you find some of those clothes. Braces hanging down on the floor and all that, dear. While you're at my karaoke, please dress a little bit more appropriately, dear. I mean, why do you hide it, darling? You look, you'd be much more comfortable in a shell suit. I'm absolutely sure you would be comfortable in a shell suit. Now, there's a new app you can get. Grumpy Artwork. You know the sort of thing. The Mona Lisa. I mean, what upset her so much that she's got a face like that? That's the question. Mona Lisa, do we want to go around art galleries looking at people that are as miserable as sin, whether it was one year ago or 200? Well, you can get an app now. You'll love this. Have you ever walked around an art gallery and thought, why does everyone look so miserable? This was from the BBC's website. Twitter user uh, Ollie Gibbs has, and so during a recent visit to Amsterdam's Rijksmuseum, Museum, I can't say foreign words, you know that, he came up with a solution to brighten up some of the portals. Portraits. Portraits. It involves face app which uses facial recognition software to make a person's face look older, younger, or even a different gender. One other thing it can do is make... Uh, uh, one other thing it can do, though, is make a person smile. Now, quite frankly, we could have done with one of these apps on Saturday night at Central Station. There were two miserable so-and-sos. Uh, man and woman sitting at a table right near the stairs. They were as miserable as sin. And I spoke. And it was those sort of things where you speak to them and they completely blank you and start talking to each other about you. That's how they were. I'm so glad they left halfway through the show. Please 
don't come out if you want to sit there and look as miserable as sin. And don't come back to me now. Oh, but you don't know what's going on in their lives. We don't want to see miserable faces. Would you come to a karaoke night or be sitting there watching this if I was like this? If I look like that all night, would you like would you would you want to come? Of course you wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. You've got to make an effort to look a bit happier. I'm not always in a happy mood, but I try. I try and hide it so that people don't see unhappiness. So this is what the app can do. Look at that. <laughs> Miserable, happy. Look. <laughs> Miserable, happy. <laughs> Can, can we apply a live version to people's faces while they're sitting in bars? I took a picture of my girlfriend over uh, of a beautiful view over Amsterdam, but I laughed because I'm afraid of heights. She said that there was an app called that was an app that my grimace could be transformed into a brilliant smile. Here's another one here. Look, <laughs> we absolutely need a live version of that. So that people don't come out or look so blooming miserable all the time. What do you reckon, guys? Do you want one of those? I bet there's a few people you know could use one of those apps, couldn't you? Absolutely. 0208 is my phone number this morning, OK? Um, good news, boys and girls. You could live to 120. I'm already booked into about five or six hundred. I don't know if you knew that already. Yeah. I'm going to go on forever. I'm going to live forever. Baby, remember my name. Remember, remember. Ba -da -da -da. Anyway. In the mail this morning, humans may live to 120 in just 60 years time. Oh, yes. According to a leading expert, research reveals it is possible to slow down a biological biological, or inner ageing process which could help us to live decades beyond the current life expectancy expectancy of just 81. Are you near that now? <sniffs> Nearly time to go! Never mind, you've had a good evening, didn't you? Besides, you don't want to live much longer, longer than that now. You won't get any pension, you know. It's all going. <laughs> Pensions are being cancelled. Absolutely. Pensions will soon be cancelled. I'm sure they will. Yet how a 120-year-old life expectancy may impact on the quality of our life is unclear. Now, you see, this is the thing. You see a lot of people, not necessarily elderly even, you see a lot of people with all sorts of ailments, they can't walk properly, they're bedridden. Is that actually a way to go? It says, the side effects of such treatments are also unknown. Several European countries are in talks to start drug trials within the next three years. The thing is, what are you going to do with these empty years, boys and girls, these extra years? Let me know what you're going to do with these extra years. What would I do? I'd just carry on talking for even longer, probably. I've no real interest in seeing the world or anything like that. I, 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 I don't have an end game. It's a strange thing, that, isn't it? Most people have got an end game, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to retire when I get to 65. Uh, then I'm going to buy a boat and I'm going to sail around the world or buy a caravan and have lots of holidays or spend more. Time. I don't have an end game. It was a bit worrying, really. Do you have an end game? What's your end game? Huh? What is your end game? That's my question to you. This professor, professor Vladimir, I think he might be Russian, Head of St. Petersburg Institute of Bioregulation and Gerontology. All oh, those words. How does he get the whole title on his pages, on his letterheads? It's important to understand that nobody would want to live a long and unhealthy life. The main goal for us now uh, must be allowed people to stay healthy for as long as possible into their old age. I mean, it would be pointless, wouldn't it, if you were, you know, just ill all the time. That would be very worrying. Mary says, I want to go out with a vodka tonic in one hand, microphone in the other. <laughs> would, would... <laughs> well, you never, we might even have the camera rolling at the time, Mary. 
What would be the song that you would be singing? Would it be the one with the pussy cat? Where's that cat, by the way? Have you nicked the cat? Where's the cat? <laughs> I seem to have lost the cat. Have you nicked the cat, Mary? <laughs> or an eternity cruise and get thrown in the sea. <laughs> under the sea, under the sea. That sounds good to me. Uh, Mary says, had a couple on Friday morn, morn, uh, Friday morning. The sound was too loud. Were they, why were they, were they, where were they sitting? Next to the speakers. Oh, absolutely. They always sit next to the speakers, don't they? People who come up and moan it's too loud. They do the same at weddings, you know. When you do, I don't, I don't do weddings anymore. I don't want to do weddings anymore. But they absolutely do come and sit right on top of the speakers and then moan that it's too loud. Always. Always without fail. Mm. There we are. All righty, let's uh, do today's birthdays. Yesterday's direct birthdays. Just about we got. We got yesterday's birthdays to do, and day today's birthdays as well, because we didn't have time yesterday, did we, to do a show? Uh, and then we'll wrap up this evening. Happy birthday to Angela. Angela's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Angela, darling. Uh, Patrick Honoré. Is 56 years old yesterday. Patrick comes and sings at the karaoke, although you do get there very late, dear. Sometimes we can't get you on. Oh, you're where are you? Over there still. Come back over here. Just a minute. Back over here. You get there so late, Patrick. We, You know, it gets to the point where we just run out of spaces, my friend. Happy birthday, Patrick. Uh, happy, happy birthday to music man himself, Gary Energize Simmons. Good friend of our dear uh, Nikki French. 55. I didn't know you was older than me, Gary. And I'm very pleased that you are. <laughs> Happy birthday, Gary. He makes music. He's got a record company. Uh, Laurie Dana Scarpelleni. Now, are you by any chance Italian? That sounds a bit Italian to me. 55 uh, yesterday. Happy birthday yesterday. Craig Bell. Theatre man. Happy birthday, Craig. And Liam Goff. They were uh, yesterday's birthdays, boys and girls. And today's birthdays, coming up right now. One moment, please. Trying to connect you. Here we go. Pamela Heights. Happy birthday, Pamela, for today. Dave Lynn. One of the most popular drag queens in the entire world. Dave Lynn's birthday today. Strangely enough, Dave, your little age is not appearing on my timeline. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dave. All right. Uh, Jamie Osborne, nice to see you on here, Jamie. Happy birthday, Jamie. James Lawson, happy birthday, James. Uh, John Edward McBride, a hard left political type person. Happy birthday, John. Hope you have a lovely time. All right, 34 years old today. So young. Happy birthday, John. George Burden. Happy birthday, George. Jessa May Yurak. Visula, Beatrice, Lucas, 24 today. Hope I'm getting his name right, boys and girls. I do try my best with the foreign names. Sometimes I trip up. I trip up several times, I reckon, today. And Sarah Hammond is 31 years old today. So happy birthday, everyone. Here comes your little song. One minute. Push a button. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you, on this Wednesday, happy birthday to you, okay? That's it for the show today, or any late messages you want me to read out, just a moment please, nope, that's it, uh, being a Wednesday, Tonight, it's Wednesday night. I'll be hosting a quiz night. It would be lovely if you came down and uh, have a little go at our quiz tonight. It's at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street in Islington. Starts at 8.30 and finishes at 10.30. You need to get there by about 8, 8.15 to get a table, OK? So once again, tonight, Wednesday night, every Wednesday, quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Upper Street, Islington, from 8.30 until um, 10 30. That's it for the show tonight. Thank you very much for joining me. Always a, a pleasure to speak. I'm going to have a cup of tea and one of my three sins. What is it? What shall I have? Three sins. I'll only have one. Three sins. Romance me. 
Rocky Road chocolate bars. Yum, yum, yum. See you again very soon. Bye-bye now.